Hey guys, it's Jill and today I wanted to do a different kind of video but it is definitely weight loss related and that is like 12 to 15 reasons why I hate being fat, overweight, whatever you want to call it, obese, morbidly obese. Um, this video is just for me to kind of go back if I'm needing some inspiration or if any of you are needing in any inspiration to see how far you've come because when you are nearing 300 pounds there are so many things and even when I'm 220, 210, 200 like even when I'm in that range there are so many things I still cannot do that I'm gonna mention in this list that I miss so much and there's only a couple of the things that I'm going to mention that I can't do when I'm like in the 220s, 210s. So this is more for me to come back when I get to that spot because in that place I really get comfortable. I'm not going to lie. I start to find that I'm more like I find myself more attractive. I'm able to wear more clothes that I'm like really uh, more into. Um, there's just so many things that come with losing weight and when you get to the certain spot sometimes you just forget where you've come from so that's what this video is for I want to preface this by saying this is not for anyone to come in the comment section and say well get up off your ass and start working out because trust me honey I do every day so this is not that kind of video this is a video I'm during my journey I just started not like I'm five to seven pounds down from where I started and this is something that I hope that you guys get some inspiration from too and a video that you will come back to if you are feeling weak and you just need that motivation because it comes. It comes and sometimes it comes at the most awful times and you're just like why am I feeling this way and then you keep asking yourself that question which gets you down even more. So I have here listed 14 things and we're going to go ahead and get started. So it is uncomfortable to sit since my stomach is so big and when I was nearing 300 pounds it was so big that it was literally like I could put a plate on my stomach and I would eat that way. Um, if I was like sitting on a couch or something like that or sitting you know going to a party and like sitting at not a table but like you know like sitting somewhere. Um, I could put, and I still can, put my water bottle, on. I mean it's not obviously not going to stay, but I can use my stomach as a prop for a lot of things. Um, if I go outside, I can, like I always have my phone on me, I can stuff my phone up underneath the bottom of my stomach and it'll stay. That's really, really sad. My stomach gets in the way of so much it's not even funny and I can remember before I started losing weight I could lay on the couch and my stomach would like push my boobs up into my chin like oh it was so uncomfortable and then just sitting down like I am right now it's not happening right now because my stomach has gone down quite a bit but literally my stomach was getting so big that it was pushing my boobs up and Oh, it was just so, so incredibly uncomfortable. And I know that is something that I will forget when I get down to like 240, 250, 260. Like I'll forget all that stuff. So this is something that I want to remember. It is so uncomfortable to sit. So a lot of times, especially the summer, I would just constantly lay down because that was what was most comfortable. Um, hmm. Number two, I have absolutely no energy when I am, first of all, still, I, I feel like right now I have a lot, obviously have a lot more energy than I did a month ago. Um, I'm working out, I'm eating healthier, I'm losing weight, I'm on the right path, I'm drinking a gallon of water a day, I'm doing everything that I should be doing. But when I am binging or I'm eating too much and I'm feeling this way, um, I have absolutely no energy. All I want to do is I get up in the morning and I'm just like, I don't want to get out of bed. And sometimes I wouldn't. Like, that's how bad it is. And that's how incredibly important it is that 
I don't ever get back to this place again because it's just not healthy for me and it's not healthy for my children to see me like that. It's just, it's not a good thing. Um, and I keep thinking about the fact that I have so much excess weight on me still. Just imagine how I'm going to feel when I lose 50, 60, 70, 80, 100. I have 150 pounds to lose. So just imagine how much more energy the smaller I get I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have because I'm not carrying around all of this extra excess weight. So absolutely no energy. Number three, this is one of the saddest things. I can no longer wear heels and wedges like I want to. I miss wearing my wedges. I live or have lived in wedges, like to live in wedges in the summertime. And when I'm going to church, I love to wear heels. You can forget it. Chunky heel, I don't care what it is. It's so uncomfortable to have all of that extra weight sitting on even a chunky heel, like just that extra height, it's so uncomfortable. So I've just been wearing flats all summer long and even into now, you know, I, I have um, a pair of Tory Burch um, Caroline flats. I have a feeling that those will probably might be my go-to shoe in the fall, which it is fall now, but we're not experiencing fall weather quite yet. But um, I miss wearing heels to church and I miss wearing wedges um, I wear wedges to the grocery store like I wear them all the time and I miss wearing them so much so that's something huge too um, number four I avoid bending down as much as possible my stomach and my legs are so big that it's hard to bend and I put here that I hate bending down whether standing or sitting oh my gosh trying to bend down when you're sitting to go pick something up off the floor not only is it embarrassing because most of the time you can't you can't even reach the floor you're gonna have to get up you cannot sit down and reach something get something from the floor because your stomach and your legs and everything like you're just so big you can't do that so you have to physically get up and then bend over and no lie like sometimes it would just be a chore and like a workout it felt to just get in the shower because I'm like out of breath just from taking off my clothes and getting them. And this is really sad. Like this is serious though. Like it's sad to say, but it's, it's the truth. And I just be like, why am I so out of breath? And I'd be like, cause you're so damn big, Jill. So that's something that's really just I think of when I'm when I'm like 140, 150, 160, 170, like between that, between the 180 to 140 range, I can sit down on the floor and I don't have to use anything. I can just literally get up using my leg muscles from the floor. And my, I might have to like push off a little bit from the floor with, with an arm or something. But now it's like a chore to get up off the floor when you're sitting down. Like you have to like maneuver your body this way and then you know use something to prop yourself up and then you're finally up and it's just like so that's another reason I don't think that I put that on here but that's something that I always remember being thin was I loved sitting on the floor because it took me literally like half a second to get up like it was just literally like Whoop, and I'm up instead of like having to do like all this maneuvering and all this like leaning on things and using all my arm oh. It's just a mess. Okay, so number five, really, really hard to shave my legs. We have a stand-up shower and it's almost near impossible because my legs are so large and my stomach is so large. My stomach is so large. It's getting much better now. I can definitely lift my leg up higher and keep it there to shave, but you know, it's just really hard to shave my legs. It was hard to put on underwear. I know this is really bad. This is like so embarrassing to say, but it's true. It was hard to put on pants. Um, you could get one leg in, but then struggle to get the other leg in because you can't really lift your leg up that high. Um, taking care of my feet is really hard. Like I've gotten more pedicures this summer than I've ever gotten before. And I really need to go get one now because I have a gel. Um, polish on my toenails but I don't know how to get it off myself and I just don't want to go to get it taken off so it looks really bad but 
yeah, there's no way I could touch my toes to, I could barely, like it is a chore and it is like <laughs> to just clip my toenails, like forget painting them, no way. And then even to just like use like the pet egg, like it's really hard to get my leg up on my leg to file all that dead skin off. So, hmm. Number six, I get out of breath very quickly. I don't like to do much because everything is so much harder. I kind of touched on this a little bit already, um, but it's so true. If you guys have been watching my Snapchats, you guys know that I have a hill coming up to my house. Um, I walk my kids to school and coming up that hill, I avoided, like I would literally take them to school every day because I was avoiding that hill. And then all of a sudden I was just like, Jill, like, Changes are not going to happen if you continue to do what's comfortable for you. So you have to get out of that comfort zone. And I have been making that hill my bitch. <laughs> so yeah, I, and of course I still get out of breath, but things are getting a lot, a lot better. Like it's nowhere near it, where it used to be. I can get in the shower and not be out of breath. But when I'm, when I'm nearing 300 pounds, it's hard to breathe at times. No joke. Especially when it's so damn hot. Ugh. Um, number seven, I absolutely hate myself being this big. And that's something really sad to say, but it's a reality that's true for me. Like, I would avoid mirrors at all costs. I had in my head I wasn't this big, you know. I had a, a vision in my head of what I was. And then as my clothes kept getting bigger... I would look at myself in the mirror and say, hmm, I'm a size 22 and a 3X on top, but I don't look it. Like, I just don't look it, you know? And it's just, it's just time to face reality and just be like, I cannot stand myself this big. Like, I feel so unattractive. I feel so disgusting. I feel so lazy. I just, and these are all horrible things to think. And trust me, my thought process is so different than it was when I wrote these things down a month ago, but this is something that I have to remember. And if I come back to this video to remember this because it's so incredibly important to remember those feelings that I had about myself and just, it's just not a healthy situation at all. Number eight, I can't cross my legs. I call it man or lady style. Like, you know how men will usually cross their legs like, okay, their leg is like this, and then they cross it like this. You guys get it? I don't know. And then women cross their legs like this. Well, this isn't going to happen until I get down to like 210 or something. But, you know, just like the man style, I guess you can kind of envision it like this, where it just goes straight over. Um, let's see if I can do that now. I literally have to like pull my leg to like get it up and mm -mm, it slides right back down. So no, I still can't, I mean I know for sure I can't do it like this, like lady style, but men style I can't even do that right now either. So that's a really hard and that's one of those things where it's just like I just cannot wait to be able to cross my legs. And for someone who's been thin their whole life or someone who, you know, may have lost a lot of weight. That may have been the last thing crossing their mind when they were on their journey to losing the weight, but that's one of the things I'm just like, not only can I not wait to get in a pair of shorts and feel like really confident and comfortable and dresses, but one of the biggest things is I cannot wait until I can cross my legs and then sit in a chair like this and cross like be Indian style, like crisscross applesauce can't wait for it y'all I'm so excited for that okay so number nine it's almost impossible to put on shoes with buckles or zippers or anything like that it is so hard to get shoes on it's almost literally like being pregnant like I'm not even kidding when I was pregnant with control I couldn't do any of these things that I'm talking about so it's literally like you're pregnant I mean that's all I gotta say um, number 10, I haven't been experiencing this lately, but when I was nearing 300, my feet always hurt if I stand, if I stood or walked longer than what I was used to, and they were always, always swollen. That's one 
thing about my body that I've always loved are my feet. I have always thought that I have really, really pretty feet. Um, they're getting there because, you know, I could always see the bones and they're just like really, just really pretty. Um, they're getting there. They are getting there, but they're still not where I feel they should be. But they're definitely not swollen like they were. Girl and guys, they used to be so swollen and my fingers used to be so swollen. And my fingers are definitely still like huge and so are my um, wrists and stuff. Um, oh, I talked about this in number one. I can literally use my stomach as a cup holder. Um, it's so It was so big. It was literally like I was pregnant. Um, number 12, I'm nowhere near as flexible as I used to be. I am so flexible. I can do a split, not this way, but this way. Girl, I haven't even tried it. Don't even ask me to try it until I'm like 20 to 30 pounds lighter than I am now. I am so flexible when I don't have this stomach and these legs in the way. Um, also I cannot reach my arms on my back. Like, let me show you. It's getting better, but I'm still extremely stiff. Like usually I can like, usually like reach all parts of my back and I'm actually able to, as far as like scratching and reaching like this, I'm able to do it now because a lot of my back fat has kind of gotten a little less swollen too and gone down quite a bit. But I'm telling you last month and even this summer, like I was like, I can't even put my arms behind my back. That's how bad this is getting. Um, and it's always been just like nothing for me. So that's something huge. Um, this is something that's a little embarrassing. When I'm, when I'm naked and I'm looking at myself in the mirror, my lower stomach was literally touching the top of my leg. And I avoided mirrors at all costs and one day I was just like, I, I noticed my stomach getting in the way and I was having to literally like lift up the bottom of my stomach and I was just like, this is not normal, like, no. Um, and then one day I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh my gosh, my stomach is touching the top of my legs. Um, so yeah, that's a really sad one and it's really like, Hmm. Makes you like, wow. The last one. Ava has told me several times that I look pregnant. Um, I remember when I moved into this house, it was in February. I want to say it was close to Valentine's Day, as a matter of fact, and it may have been on Valentine's Day. I don't know. I cannot remember. But what I do remember is that I had this shirt on that had the little holes like it was a long sleeve shirt and it had like the little thumb holes in them and I love that shirt and then I had on some leggings and I was so just huge even back in February like my stomach was really swollen that day and it was really bloated and I literally looked pregnant so that day she told me I was pregnant and I just continued to get bigger and bigger and bigger and gain more and more and more weight since February and I'd wear certain like nightgowns to bed and she'd be like, mommy, you look like you have a baby in your tummy. And you know, it would, it would be a joke. And I'd be like, no, I don't have a baby in my belly. And you know, I'd kind of come back at her like that. And I'd just be like, when I'm around people in general, I feel so uncomfortable. I literally hid from the world this whole summer and I don't want to live that way anymore. I want to be proud of the way that I look and I want my kids to be proud. And, you know, they see me being more active and my son is just such an inspiration. He's so awesome because he's just like, keep going, mommy. You can do this. You've got this. I can go on and on about how amazing my son is, but I won't. But I mean, it's just amazing the current encouragement that my kids give me and that you guys give me. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because... It just, it means the world to me. And honestly, I feel that when you are on a weight loss journey, you need it from yourself, but you also need it from other people. So for that, I thank you so much. I thank God every day for you guys coming into my life and watching my videos and my children, um, the hugest blessings ever. 
And I just want to thank you guys so much for watching this video and hope that it inspired you guys. Maybe if you are in the 300s or 250 or, you know, if you are feeling any of these ways and you haven't started your weight loss journey, that maybe it would kind of give you that fire up underneath the ass to start. And let's all do this together because it's really hard and it's so much easier. Still never easy, but a lot easier when you do have a really good support system. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.